What is up guys? It's Mr. Lee Redman here with episode number three of the uh, Belgian Delight series with uh, Bruges second team, Sir Clay Bruges. Uh, we have now completed the uh, regular season as I say across the pond and um, it's not gone too badly. Um, to be honest it couldn't get worse in the first section winning only two games so um, it's not gone too bad. We'll go into the fixtures in a second. What we're going to do first though guys is, wrong one, is the transfers. We sent out two youngsters on loan. Maxime van der Waal went to Turnhout on loan and then Matteo Martins went to Rosselaer. So I had six players go on loan, three to uh, Rosselaer, three to Turnhout. So it's not been too bad to be fair. That gives a little indication how the, how the uh, second season, the second half's gone. This, well, which is a bit surprising that you said that considering my position. So what we'll do is now go straight into the fixtures. If I can find them, I was I did have them set up. That's annoying. So here we go, guys. The last game was unfortunately a two-nil defeat against Bruges in the Bruges derby. Um, that's not a bad result considering you when you have a look at the home game. We followed that up with a one-one draw against Charleroi. Uh, the skins Cabano put Charleroi one-nil up on the arrow mark. Jo Mario, my loney from Sporting Lisbon, made it 1 1 in the 64th minute. And his 11 shots to 8 in Charlois's favour. 5 on target to my 3, and I had 54% possession. So that ended a run of 5 games without a no, 6 games without a win in all competitions. We then followed that up with a 2 2 draw against one of our main rivals, KV Michelin. Nuno Reyes burst one lap with another loney from Sporting just after 10 minutes. David De Starme made it 1 1 just before the hour mark. And then just six minutes later, main striker Michael Chebo made it 2 1. Annoyingly, with just two minutes to go, Abdul Yakino ED equalised from Michelin to make it two draws out of two. 12 shots to 10 in my favour. I had seven on target to their four, and I had 55% possession. We then got our first win of this section, a two, oh excuse me, a surprising comeback come from behind winner, Racing Club Genk. Kim Ojo put Genk 1-0 up in the 20th minute, and we were 1-0 down at half time. Kaladao Kulabali, I think is how you say it, equalised by putting through his own net for us, just before the hour mark. And then with 15 to go, Frederick Boy made it 2-1 to give us our first win of the section. As you can see, I did not deserve it. 20 shots to four in Genk's favour. Nine on target to my one. And they had 67% possession. Now that is football manager at its best. Though I'm not complaining too much as I actually came away with three points. We then followed that up with a 1-1 draw against um, AA Ghent. Sloan Prevad put Ghent 1-0 up just after half time. But within two minutes of Chebert equalised to make it 1-1. To actually put us four games unbeaten. Ten shots to seven against favour. They had four on target to my two. It's 50% possession each. Followed that up by beating Lears 2-1. This was actually quite a big win considering where they were in the league as well. Bart Boussé put us 1-0 up just bef uh, on the 15 minute mark. Karim Sadai equalised for Lears uh, 60 seconds before half time. So we were 1-1. Arne Nouts put us 2-1 up just after the hour mark. We held on to get a very valuable win. 12 shots to 7 in my favour. 7 on target to their 3. And I, they had 62% possession. This was also good because we had a couple of weeks, weeks break actually here. And uh, we the only thing was we beat Toulon, Toulouse Fontaines, which I believe is Toulouse's second side. No, it's actually a, no, it is a lower league team. From France, we beat them 6 1. Kabanga hat trick, a toik, a talk, sorry, Stallions, and Frederick Boy. Unfortunately, that break killed us a little bit as we then lost 2 1 to Zolta Verigam. With Chaber plus 1 up in the 29th minute, and we were 1 up to half time. However, two goals in two minutes, one from the penalty spot from Jens Nassines, made it 2 1 to Zolta, Zolta, and we ended up losing 2 1. But as you can see, it was on the other foot, as we had 9 shots to their 12, but we had 9 on target to their 4, and they had 55% possession. The next game, however, was a disaster. 
It was the return game of the Bruges Derby. Unfortunately, Kahinde for Thai put them one love just before half time. It wasn't too bad, but the second half was a disaster. As three goals in 12 minutes killed us. The Stene in this just after the hour mark. Tom de Soto, surprisingly, just three minutes later, made it 2 0, 3 0, sorry. And with 15 minutes to go, Leo Rafaelov made it 4 0. And then with 10 minutes to go, de Soto scored again to get his second and make it 5 to Club Bruges. 16 to 5 in club's favour. They had 9 on target to my 1 and they had 53% possession. We then lost 3 2 in Mons. Georgiou put them 1 up in 60 seconds. Our Brightman made it 2 0 in the 7th minute. Frederick Boy made it 2 1 on the half hour mark. And then RNA Nods equalised to make it 2 2 just before half time. Paul Eric, Paul Ericsson, sorry, made it 3 2 to Mons. With just 20 minutes to go to make a 3 2, and we weren't able to bounce back, and we lost our third game in a row. 16 shots to 7 in Monza's favour. They had 8 on target to my 3, and they had 53% possession. We then lost again, 3 1 at home to Standard Liege. Igor de Camargar de Camargo made it 1 0 in the fifth minute. Or they now equalised for us, and we went in 1 1 at half time. Unfortunately, Mitche Bacheye in the 50th minute made it 2 1. And with just two minutes to go, Frederick Bulots made it free to round up the victory. We also had Tim Smothers injured in the 25th minute. And then Arnie Nods in the 79th to just make the game worse. 22 shots to three in standards favour. They had eight on target on my one. And they had 54% possession. We then went to Anderlecht and lost 2-1. Matias Suarez put uh, Anderlecht 1-0 up on the half hour mark. Reyes equalised for us. On the 51st minute to make it 1 1, but just 15 minutes later, Tobias Sano made it 2 1 to Anderlecht, and we ended up losing our fifth game on the bounce. 17 shots to four in my uh, their favour. I had eight on tar they had eight on target to my three, and they had 55% possession. And it was looking really bad at that point as we were bottom four points adrift. However, we've started our recovery by beating a team above us, Vaslen Bavaren. 1-0 thanks to Alessio Stalins on the 12th minute. Christoph De Heen did get injured with 5 minutes to go. I was a little worried considering that seems to be when teams score straight after injuries. But luckily we held out to give us a fighting chance. 13 shots to 7 in my favour. We both had 2 each on target. And I had 55% possession. We then lost 2-0 at OH Laverne. A Boog scored in the 4th minute. And then Jovan Kostovski in the 45th minute. Made it two to give him the win, and I've actually just realised Vanny Oni actually did play against me in that game. Twelve shots to ten in their favour. We both had five each on target, and they had fifty-one percent possession. Then we had Ostende. We beat them three 0 This is a little bit of a, a derby almost. I'm not too sure if it's a derby, but it's our fierce rivals or other rivals. Sorry, after our fierce ones against club. Unless you're Stellens, plus one nil up in the thirty-seventh minute. Just seven minutes later, Junior Cabango made it 2-0. And just 60 seconds after that, he made it 3 to give us a 3-0 lead at halftime. That is how it ended. And we won 3-0 to give us a massive chance of staying out of the bottom two. Nine shots each. I had four on target to their two. And they had 53% possession. But going into my final game, <coughs> I was actually outside the bottom two by a point. But there was a slight problem. I was going to KV Cook. Korjic and the bottom two which were Bavaren and I think it was Ghent actually were playing each other so I had to win and as you can see guys I did Brecht Kopan put them one up in 60 seconds however Kabanga equalised for us with just five minutes to go before half time just after the hour mark Joe Mario made it 2-1 we held on to take a win and stay out of bottom two 22 shots to 7 in Korjic's favour. They had 7 on target to my 4. And they had 60% possession. I do believe Ostende actually beat... Um, uh, sorry, Vestland beat Ghent to um, finish 2nd from bottom. So as you can see guys, I have finished 14th. You may have caught a little glimpse of some playoffs there. Basically this is now playoff season in Belgium. 1st to 6th as you uh, saw just then. 
go into the championship and they carry on their points I believe no they don't I think they may get halved no not even that not quite sure how the points work there um, but Genk there and like standard Liege Lockeren, Zolta Vergum and Mons and I believe they go they go into the group stage of Champions League winner goes group stage runner up goes final qualifying round third qualif no playoffs of Europa third round of play uh, UEFA qualifying and then the winner of the um, Europa League playoff section will be the final place so fifth and sixth are not guaranteed Europe unless they made it to the um, cup final whoops wrong one bottom two as I called in the last one Bavarian against Ghent um, Bavarian will start with a three point advantage due to finishing higher and then they play each other five times Bavarian and get a three home games against Ghent too um, whoever finishes bottom uh, will be relegated then first will play three teams from the other section uh, from division one sorry to see who goes down after that I believe that's knockouts semis and then final and then there's my section no that's wrong one the teams finishing 7th to 14th have a chance of making Europe so I've got Cordrich, Liers and Laverne and then group B is Charleroi, Club Bruges, Michelin and Ostende we play each team twice home and away and then the winners play each other in a two-legged final if you wish with the winners qualifying in the final Europa League place I believe they start in round two of the qualifying section so that is how that's gone guys what we're going to do now we'll have a look at some stats um, I've got bugger all on there apart from the appearances with Cornelius and Decaen my leading goal scorer I do believe was actually Kobanga due to his um, uh, run at the end there that you saw and um, oh no we've actually got Mario Kobanga and Ochebo on five and then Stallions and Nauts are on four so you can see and also Nuno Reyes my centre-back joined highest goal scorer that's that's how bad it's been for us that's how much of a struggle it has been for us Steph Wills is wanted by let's have a look uh, Victoria Plazen he had quite a few bids from the Czech Republic actually um, which is going to be interesting. Nuno race obviously goes back as well. Um, so what we'll do is the look of finances, guys. It's still not great. Um, we've got we're 1.4 million debt. We will be 1.9 million at the end of this season. Um, we've got a two loans which will be finished at the end of the season. Out of the six million we've lost this year, half of that is due to player wages, which is normally the case anyway. Um, or not player wages but total wages the 200,000 has gone out on bonuses staff non staff is 800,000 but then the second biggest after the wages is the loans so with the loans going at the end of this season that should be nice I'll wipe off some money not I won't expect it to wipe off all of it but hopefully it will be some money and um, hopefully the wages will come down at the end of this season um, something I was actually having a look at just now with regards to that player that's actually on loan that I mentioned this guy here Lucas Van Eno if you have a look at my under 21s I've got quite good potential around um, oh right these so it's Vikandere that was wanted by Anderlecht I thought it was um, the guy that went out on loan Van, this one Van Der Waller but it's not so um, He's one by Anderlecht. They have made bids of 100,000 for him, but I refuse. Um, what I might do, actually, is if they do make a bid again, when's his contract up? Two years' time. What I might do is I might actually um, ask for a bit more money, get a little cheeky, um, possibly um, basically just uh, ward him off almost sort of thing, just make it too much, but we'll wait and see what happens. But this guy here, Lucas Van Eno, he's actually got really good ability and really good potential. And he is 23. He looks good. But what I didn't realise is there's an agreed price with the team he's gone out on loan to, which is O.H. Laverne. This is the one I was meant to go to. Who uh, were actually in my division, as he played in the game against me in the second half of the season. So we've got an agreed price of 1.3 mil. 
Now, he's a good player and I'd like to keep him. But it's a win-win situation because if I get him back, then that's a, I'm getting a good player back. But I'm actually get I'm actually going to be selling him for double his price. Well, actually, yeah, double his price. So I get a bit of money. 1.2k will drop off the wages, and um, I'll be sitting sitting pretty really. Well, not pretty, but I'll be reducing some of the debt and um, some of the wages. So that'd be quite nice. Um, the players I've got on loan, we've got, I don't know what happened there, why I did that, I've got four, Joe Mario, Joris Delay, I think is how you say that, Nuno Race, and Ismelia Ndai. Now, if I'm being honest, out of the, out of the, if I wanted to keep them, I'd say I want Delay, Race, and um, Mario. I mean, Mario and Race are joint top scorers for me. And he's a really good keeper. My backups aren't that great. I've got, I haven't got any um, agreements in place. But something I did notice is Joyce Delay is my second highest earner on seven thousand, and dies on nine hundred. Race is on eight hundred. Mario is on six hundred. Now that's ten thousand pounds essentially, with regards to um, to wages. There, actually, I don't think it is. It's a about eight nine thousand so with them going I am going to bring my wage budget below I'm going to bring my wages below my budget I've also got another Vierson is retiring at the end of the season with three thousand four hundred so that's over ten grand there um, Steph Wills is wanted you never know there might, there's going to be other players I don't want to keep and obviously there's a potential for Van Eno to go so I could have about 15k drop off my wage budget by the time I start or by the time all of the contracts are up. I'm going to have to wait and see how they are to see who I want to keep. Um, so that will be a little interesting. Something I also found out earlier basically. I did do. I did try this video just now but I messed up a little bit while I was looking at some details. Is There is a clause in place for Tom De Suter who scored two against me for club. Um, I get 20% of, if I'm reading this right of his next transfer fee when clubs sell him, if clubs sell him. What I've done, and what I always do with players that are at other clubs, but I've got presented sell-on clauses on, I've added them to my shortlist. The only slow problem I have is he is 28. But we'll have to wait and see how he does at the end of the season. So he's played 24 games and scored 10 goals, which is not bad for a midfielder. So we'll have to see how that goes. Something I've also noticed, I have a feeder club in, um, what's her name, Sporin, wrong one, there we go, uh, there we go, affiliated club, Sporin Lisbon, so they'll be able to send players to me on loan and their Sporting will play, pay the wages in full, um, but I have no obligation to, make, to actually play the player. Um, unfortunately, I don't actually get any um, money either, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but that's going to be good because they can send them. They can send players on loan to me. I get messages if um, a player is on loan list or gets a bid put in for him. So I um, we'll have to see that is. But so uh, that is it for this episode, guys. Leave some likes, leave some comments, subscribe. Would appreciate it all. Uh, tune in next time for an end of an actual end of season review. The playoffs will be done. Um, if I make it to the final on the two legs, I may actually live stream them. We'll have to see how it goes. But uh, we've got these games. Cordray to Lier, to Laverne. Um, so hopefully we can get some decent there. I have to be honest, it wouldn't be quite right for me to actually finish or get into Europe considering I'm 14th. But that's the way they want it done. But uh, that is it for this episode, guys. Uh, until next time, as always, take it steady.